Flash, together with PDF, redefine what a document can do. Hello and welcome to IT Matters. Today I'm going to talk about deploying Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Reader version 9. My name is Joel Geraci and I'm the Acrobat Technical Evangelist. The topics for discussion today are the Acrobat 9 product line, preparing the reader installer for customization, I'll cover your various deployment options, talk a little bit about the Adobe Customization Wizard, and then give you a brief demonstration. The Adobe Acrobat 9 product line has three components, Adobe Acrobat 9 Standard, Acrobat 9 Pro, and Acrobat 9 Pro Extended. And then of course we have the free Adobe Reader. The Adobe Reader is found on almost 90% of all the internet connected desktops. So when you send somebody a PDF file, you can be pretty sure that they'll be able to open the file and read it. Moving clockwise from the bottom right, we have Adobe Acrobat 9 Standard. Adobe Acrobat 9 Standard will allow you to reliably create and distribute PDF documents and forms and even allow you to turn on some special features in the free Adobe Reader so the people receiving your forms can save, digitally sign, and return data back to you. Next up we have Adobe Acrobat 9 Pro. If you're a typical knowledge worker and you need to collaborate and securely distribute information, this is the tool for you. Next up we have Acrobat 9 Pro Extended. This gives you all the capabilities of Acrobat 9 Pro, but also adds the ability to convert 3D models, embed video, and also embed flash files in PDF. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Adobe Reader 9 installation files are downloaded as a single compressed executable. In order to customize the Reader installer, you need to expand that executable into its component parts. This will give you access to the MSI file, which is required for customization. The URL on the screen will take you to the tech note that describes this process. Adobe Acrobat 9 uses the industry standard Windows installer. And to help IT managers tune that installer to their specific needs, we supply the Adobe Customization Wizard 9 as a free download. For those of you still on Acrobat 8, we also have a customization wizard for that available in the same location. At the very end of this presentation, I will have a slide up with URLs to locate all of the tools and documentation that I refer to in the remainder of this presentation. Or you can download the Acrobat 9 deployment kit by clicking on the Files button just below this video window. Now in addition to using the customization wizard, you can also deploy Acrobat using Windows SMS or Group Policy, and also you can host Acrobat or Reader on a Citrix presentation server or using Windows Terminal Services. Basically, the customization wizard creates a transform file for the MSI installer that will allow you to optimize the behavior of the installer. So you can set it up to silently install, pre-serialize the software, and adjust the reboot options. You can also tell the installer to remove earlier versions of Acrobat or Reader back to version 6, suppress the display of the end user license agreement and registration prompts, and adjust key application preferences. I'll be demonstrating that in just a moment. If you've used the Customization Wizard 8, you'll be happy to know that we added new capabilities to the Customization Wizard 9 to correspond to the new features in Acrobat and Reader 9. We've added the ability to disable all or portions of the Acrobat.com access points, and we also allow you to manage the enhanced security in that you can lock the settings so that end users can't modify them after you've deployed the product. You can also use the Customization Wizard to distribute customized PDF portfolio layouts, as well as other files during the installation process. You can also disable or prevent users from joining our product improvement program, disable the display of PDF in the browser, and install custom redaction code sets to maintain standardization. But rather than PowerPoint you into a coma, let's start the demo. Basically what the customization wizard does is creates a transform file for the Acrobat MSI file. So to begin your customizations, you're going to want to open that MSI file. Because of some legacy issues, you'll see that the Acrobat Pro Extended MSI file is labeled acro3d.msi. Don't worry, it really is Acrobat Pro Extended. The settings that you can adjust are grouped into categories that appear on the left. If you are deploying Acrobat with a volume license, the personalization options is where you would pre-configure the serial number. 
The installation options will allow you to control how the installer will actually run. For example, here I'm going to suppress the dialog box that prompts the user to reboot the machine at the end of the installation. If you set the installation to run unattended, the end users won't be able to make any modifications to what you've already set up. In the Features area, you can control which capabilities of Acrobat will be installed. If my company doesn't use CAD, I can save some space by not installing the import filters. Now, the customization wizard is fairly self-explanatory. So rather than show you all of its capabilities, what I'm going to do is show you just the ones that are most frequently asked about when I'm discussing deployment with IT managers. I'll start with the big one. This box will allow you to suppress the display of the end user license agreement when Acrobat or Reader starts up. So all you need to do is agree to the end user license agreement for your organization and then you can turn this box on. Another frequent request is the ability to turn off the automatic updates. You can do that by checking this box. You can control the installation of trusted root certificates here. You can also disable the registration prompt dialog and disable enrollment into the product improvement program. Here you can determine whether PDFs will display in the browser or simply download and then open. You can also lock the setting so that end users can't change it back after you've deployed the product. This section will give you very granular control over which features on Acrobat.com are available to your end users. The easiest way to set up your directory servers and trusted identities would be to set up your copy of Acrobat first and then simply load those settings into the customization wizard. The trusted identities are stored as an address book file. This section will allow you to add trusted hosts. By adding your own domain to this list, Acrobat will be able to communicate with your servers without asking the user for permission. And then of course you can prevent them from making any further changes. The registry panel is extremely powerful. If you have pre-configured your copy of Acrobat to run the way you want it to, you can push your settings out to everyone else in the organization. Simply drag the settings from your computer to the destination computer. In this example, my default settings for annotation colors will be populated across the enterprise. Using this simple technique, you can finally tune how Acrobat or Reader is deployed throughout your organization. As I mentioned earlier, here is a list of links that will take you to important information about deploying Acrobat and other IT resources. But you can also click on the Files button just below this video window and download the Acrobat 9 Deployment Kit which contains all of the information listed here as well as the customization wizard for version 9.